Howdy. In this video, we're going to learn how to size some screws, um, specify the torque required for those screws, as well as determine the gate, the depth of engagement and the number of threads needed. So that's you, typically all you need to specify a bolt, not only its size, but the tightening torque and the depth of engagement or number of threads to engage. So you've seen a lot of these problems when, when you were back in statics and solids, you had some shaft and um, some pulleys or gears, um, this thing spinning, and we have the bearings at A and B over here, keeping it in equilibrium, right? From statics, you learn how to solve for the reactions. In solids, maybe we can learn how to calculate the deflections. But now in machine elements, we're gonna teach you how to size those bearings. So what bearing numbers we need to specify, that's a future lecture. As well as in this case, we're gonna show you how to size the bolts, right? We always assume these bearings are grounded or secured here rigidly, but in reality, they're either welded or in this case, I'm saying that there's two bolts um, that are holding that bearing in place. So if you're really run into a situation like this, the first thing that you're gonna need to do is you're gonna have to do the statics. You're gonna take your shaft, you're gonna do a free body diagram. Um, you're gonna put the applied forces, the reaction forces, and then you're gonna apply the equations of equilibrium to figure out what the reaction forces are, at, in this case, for the two bearing. Now, we, I just did a video on that for my statics course, so I'll link it at the end of the video. So if you don't remember how to, some moments, or if you want to review like super slow in detail, feel free to like jump fast forward to the end, I'll link it. Um, otherwise, then in, in, in just a couple steps, what we did is we saw moments at point B to solve for AY, we saw moments at A to solve for the BY, there's no forces in the X, so naturally the BX equals zero. And we also checked our, our answers by summing forces in the Y, which is a super important point that I always stress out. Um, I always try to check your work. Anyways, the details are in that other video. So let's say you have, we're back to this problem. We had some shaft, you did the statics and you figure out the reaction forces A, A Y. So for the bearing here at A and the bearing at B. So I had, this one was a journal bearing for this problem. And this one was a thrust bearing. That's why um, there's no AX here, and we did solve for X over here, but it's zero. Anyway, so now I know that in this bearing B, I needed a six kilo Newton force going down over here to keep this uh, shaft in equilibrium. And when we look at it, just by inspection, just looking at it, it makes sense. So we have one kilo Newton force down here, and then I got two and three on this other end. All of these are trying to break that shaft up like that so it makes sense that the bearing is going to hold it down six kilo newtons going down no horizontal force so in this case uh, bx equals zero so now we know that this bearing right what is doing is holding down the shaft over here the way it's going to do that it's um, the bearing is enclosed in this pedal block and there's two bolts and this the bolts are for at, at what are actually securing this to to the ground so one one quick mistake that I see all the time is people will do the statics and they figure out, oh yeah, assume BY up and then you actually solve it and it turns out BY goes down. They see a problem like this and it's like, oh, professor, but if, if at B I figured out that that force has to be down to be in equilibrium, then the size of these bolts don't matter because what I have is a force down. But that could not be farther from the truth. And the reason is quite simple. When we did this free body diagram, we saw for the reaction here at BY, it says six kilo newtons down. It means I need something to push it down, right? But remember this free body diagram was on the shaft, which is this purple thing that I'm coloring. So the shaft, right, needs a reaction force here of six kilo newtons. But remember this free body diagram of the shaft, the shaft sits inside that pillow block and it's in direct contact. So if you remember from statics as well, anytime you have two contacting bodies, the forces are equal and opposite. So while the shaft does need a force down, that's a reaction force, right? This guy is in contact with the pillow block. So what the pillow block is gonna feel is a six kilo Newton force, Oops, six kilo Newtons up. Again, because they're touching, they have to be equal and opposite. 
right? Which means this pillow block is being held together by these bolts. So there's two of these bolts, and if we assume that they're equally spaced apart from this pillow block, which they are most of the time, then if I have six kilonewtons going up, right, I'm gonna need on each of these bolts three kilonewtons each going down. So ho hopefully you can see again. Again, in this shot, you do the free body diagram, the reaction force is down, right? but that's the force on the shaft. The pillow block is gonna feel equal and opposite. So it's gonna feel a six kilo Newton force pushing it up and what's gonna keep it down is the bolts. So there we go. We very quickly figured out now what the force on the bolt is gonna be, um, three kilo Newtons. So this is the applied force. So the force is three kilo Newtons uh, on each of the bolts. But by now you know that when we design things, we don't just uh, use the force applied. Instead, we use uh, what we call design overloads. What is a design overload? It's like, okay, we know from the statics, right? We know that each of the bolts is gonna see three kilonewtons, right? But when we design, we wanna add some factor of safety. So in this case, if we just assume, for example, let's use a safety factor, a factor of safety of four, then the design overload, right, is just gonna be the safety factor times the force on the bolt. So if this is three kilonewtons and we use a safety factor of four, right, four times three is 12. So we will size the bolt as if it's gonna feel 12 kilonewtons, that's our design overload, when in actuality we know it's probably just gonna see three kilonewtons. Why is this important? Because when it's time to size the bolt, the equation that we're gonna use is this one here. I erased the drawing, right? But we're assuming these forces are in, um, the, the force here is axial, right? So it's putting a tensile load on that bolt. So if you remember the equation for a tensile load is just force by area. When we're gonna do bolts, right, this equation is gonna take the form of, instead of a stress, stress, we're gonna have the proof strength of the bolt. Instead of the force, we're gonna use the design overload, which I'm designated here as P, which is nothing but the force on the bolt times the safety factor. And instead of just a regular area, we're gonna use the tensile area. Remember this number we can get or we can get from the tables for the dimensions of the bolt. So from this problem, right, we have our P value. We have this one over here. What we want to do is we want to size the bolt, which means we need to solve for AT. So the tensile area over here is simply going to be the design overload by the proof strength over here. So again, we have the design overload. Next, we need to figure out what is the proof strength. So the problem doesn't state like what grade or class of bolt we're gonna use. But in this example over here, let's use, just go with the cheaper kind of bolt or a lower class. So if we assume, uh, assume a bolt a class of uh, 4.8, when you look at the table in, um, in our machine elements booklet, we know we can see if we go to SAE class 4.8, um, it tells us that the proof load is going to be 310 megapascals, right? So by assuming a class of the bolt, right, we're going to know the proof strength so we can solve for AT with the tensile area very, very quickly. So if I plug in the values over here, right, the proof load is 12 kilonewtons or 12 times 10 to the three newtons. The proof strength, we say 310 megapascals, right? So 310 mega, megapascals, but remember a megapascal is equal to a newton per millimeter squared. 
right? And look at what this is gonna do, right? Newton is gonna cancel with Newton. The millimeter, the millimeter at the denominator off the denominator means, right, is gonna go to the numerator. So when we solve um, for this one, it's gonna give us the area of the bolt in millimeter squared. So if I type that in the calculator super quickly, 12 times 10 to the three divided by 310, we get 38.7. So what that means is if I purchase a bolt, a metric bolt uh, of class 4.8, I'm gonna need a bolt that at least has 38.7 millimeters uh, for its tensile cross section. So if you go, for example, on your table 10.2, which gives you the basic dimensions for metric screws. And let's assume, for example, that we're gonna go with, um, with the coarse thread, right? We're gonna go over here, and again, I'm looking for a bolt that has 38.7 millimeters for the uh, stress area. Tensile, so I'm going down, I'm going down, and I see one that has 36.6 millimeters. That is smaller, so that's not quite it. If I go to the next one, it tells me that a coarse thread, um, a 10 millimeter nominal diameter bolt, so an M10 has a uh, tensile area of 58 millimeters, right? So that's the one I'll pick. Yes, there's one with 36, but if I go one with a smaller a cross section, right? A smaller bolt is going to have a higher load, so we're not going to achieve the safety factor. So always go with a bolt that it has um, either exactly the same cross sectional area or the one that is uh, next one up. So the next one up is going to be, um, let me double check over here, is going to be an M10. So M10 means this uh, diameter is 10 millimeters. This guy being a coarse thread um, has a pitch of 1.5. So we would write this one as 1.5. So this is how you dimension that bolt. Again, but we said that just specifying the size of the bolt is not fully specifying uh, a bolt or a screw. Besides the side, uh, the size, we also need to specify how much torque we need to apply so, the, we, so that the bolt is um, attached correctly, right? So what we need to figure out next is going to be the, the torque. So the formula for the torque, the torque is just a 0 0.2 times Fi, where Fi is the initial tensile force, times D, the diameter of the bolt, right? Where um, this initial tensile force, Fi, I'm gonna put it over here. The formula for Fi is gonna be, it's Ki times the tensile area times the proof strength. Now this initial constant can vary. Usually if you want a permanently a bolt that you not uh, want to assemble or disassemble, we set this Ki to 0 0.9, right? So really this formula is 0 0.9. Again, because I want to tighten those bolts one and I don't want them to be for easy removal so that we can attach and reattach. So 0 0.9, right? And then times the tensile area. So here is where you might run into some trouble or confusion, right? When we calculated this number, we said we wanted like roughly 38 millimeters. Um, we looked at the table and we said there's the bolt that has the next biggest area is 58. So once you pick a bolt, this N10 over here, to tighten it, you're supposed to use its tensile area. So here we go. Again, we're going to put 58 millimeters because if you look at the basic dimensions table, it says it has an 80 of 58 
millimeter square. And, and then times the proof strength of that bolt. So that bolt has a proof strength of 310 megapascals or 310 newtons per millimeter squared. Right, so when we plug this into the calculator, millimeter squared is gonna cancel with the millimeter square at the denominator. Then we have a tensile force just in newtons. So 0 0.9 times 58 times 310 is 16,182 newtons. That's the Fi. So once we have the initial tensile force that we want for the bolt that we're gonna purchase, right, for this guy, we're gonna put it in this formula. So 0 0.2 times Fi, which was 16,182 newtons times D, where D is the diameter. This is M10, so this is 10 millimeters. Right, so we multiply all of this. So times 0.2 times 10. And the torque that I get, if I make no calculator mistake, is 32,364. Look at the units here is Newton millimeter. Right? Or we can move the decimal over three spaces. So 32 point, um, we'll round to four, 32.4 Newton meter. And that is how much torque we need to apply so that we make sure this bolt is installed correctly. So, so far we have the size, the pitch of the bolt, as well as the tightening torque that we need to, that we need to apply to the bolt so that it's installed correctly. The next thing we need to figure out is the depth of engagement, or basically this distance here, right? How much does the bolt need to grip so that when we apply the torque, we don't strip it out uh, of this block over here. So this depth of engagement, it's also the same thing as if this was a bolt and instead of a screw, and we had a nut, the nut thickness T over here. So let me clean up the board. Now we have a simple formula for the nut thickness, which is uh, the thickness is 0 0.47 times D, where D is the diameter of the bolt. Now remember that this equation, right, the assumption for this equation is that the nut or whatever you're attaching to has the same has the same strength as the bolt right remember we picked the 4.8 class so this bolt had a strength of 310 megapascals so we, if we assume right the same uh, strength then we can use this equation right off the bat and we can figure out that depth, um, engagement depth is just 0 0.47 times the diameter of the bolt. So the bolt we're using is a 10 millimeter, right? So times 10 millimeter. This is gonna tell us that we need 4.7 millimeters, right? So this has to be 4.7 millimeters. Uh, and that's about meat, all the meat that we need so that it doesn't strip away. The next question that we can ask besides the depth is, so then um, how many threads, right? How many threads from this bolt here needs to engage? It's another way of giving this depth of engagement. And so for that, we have a formula. Remember, it's different between if we're working with the unified or the inches or the metric, um, for the metric, the number of threads, the formula is just the T by the pitch, right? So here the thickness that we figured out was 4.7 millimeters, right? And the pitch for that bolt, remember we wrote it over here. So this means a pitch of 1.5 millimeters per thread. So that when we plug this into the equation, I'll put it down here. 
the value that we're going to get is it's just the threads so we plug in the calculator 4.7 divided by 1.5 this is going to tell us 3.13 so roughly three threads 3.13 uh, threads of engagement or this is going to take about 3.13 turns to fully engage But what happens, for example, is that if the block you're attaching to um, is weaker than the bolt, right? If it's stronger, then you would still need this formula because you would still need this amount so that the threads on the bolt don't strip away, right? But so again, if this block is stronger, you don't have to worry about anything. Just continue using this equation. The problem is if this block over here is weaker, then what do you do right so let's say for example instead of 310 this guy had a strength of maybe 250 megapascals so what we need to do is we need to come up with a ratio that we'll use for this equation and it's simple so you're going to take 310 and divide by 250 so 310 divided by 250 this is 1.24. So what it means is you still use the same formula, but at the end of the day, you need to multiply, for example, this distance by a factor of 1.24. So the new thickness would be 4.7 times 1.24, or roughly 5.8, maybe three millimeters. Right, and this is assuming now the block has a strength of 250 megapascals. You can see now that because the block is weaker uh, than the bolt over here, we had to increase the thickness, right? So that at the end of the day, the stress levels is the same. So then this, um, again, would be the depth of engagement for a block with a strength of 250 megapascals. Again, if this guy is stronger, still use that formula because you still need that thickness for the bolt. If it's weaker, do a ratio and just multiply that. So hopefully you found this video helpful. Um, if you picked up on, on any mistakes, uh, let me and everybody else know uh, down in the comments below. Otherwise, we'll, we'll see you on the next one.